Hey, and welcome to another Firefly beading tutorial. In this video today, I'm going to be showing you how to make a macrame beaded bracelet, simple like this one. It will fit most sizes um, up to a size 7 wrist, so kids to a size 7 wrist. Uh, I'm going to be using Chinese knotting nylon here. Uh, this is a 1 millimeter, or you could use a 0.8 millimeter size. I've got two colors. I also have uh, some pens and a bulletin board that I'm going to be using to kind of hold everything in place as I'm working. You can use whatever pens you have lying around. I also have nine beads for this pattern in size 60 seed beads, Miyuki seed beads, and then an extra two, so 11 beads in all. And I'm going to start off with about 30 inches, so this is folded in half at 15 of cord. This is my base color, so the color that I'm putting underneath everything, and then my top color is going to be about 48 inches. And again, um, you, will, you will adjust these sizes to what you need for your bracelet. This will make, like I say, from a kid's bracelet up to a size, I would say, 7 inch wrist. You're also going to want to have a lighter on hand. I have this big one here. And some cutters or scissors. Let me move everything out of the way and the first thing we're going to start is our base color here we want to put find find a, the middle so we're going to do this to the middle and then do an overhand knot so over and under and pull this knot as close as you can to the end of this loop here make it nice and tight and then what we're going to need to do here is put our ends together and I'm going to use my lighter to kind of create a needle on the end of this to thread on my beads. So very carefully run your fingers over the hot end. Um, you do have to be careful. You don't want to burn yourself, but you can kind of mold this to where you need to get it. So I'm going to take one of my two beads that's over on this side and try to string it on. This might take a minute or two to get it just right. Find that sweet spot. Kind of mold it to where you need it and then try again. Let's see. There we go. So we want to take one of our beads and slide it on. All the way down to this knot. And then we're going to create an overhand knot and the way I do this. So over and under like this. Pull the bead through and then cinch my knot up next to my bead. Pull everything tight. I'm using my nails a lot when I'm doing this to kind of push the knots where I need them to go. And then grab a ruler or something to measure here. And for the type of the size bracelet that I'm making today, again, uh, will fit a kids to a size seven, is I want a two inch tail here. So a two inch amount of space. So I measure from the knot Low my bead to the two inch mark and then put an overhand knot right here. And pull this as close to the two as possible. Once it's there, you can pull everything nice and tight. All right, so now we're ready to start threading on our nine beads that I've got laid out here. We're going to save one, the one on the end. Um, the one on the left side is going to stay off of this. So we want to thread on all nine beads. And once we've got all nine on, again, we're leaving one of these beads off. So we want nine on right now. Then we're going to pull them all down. And I'm just going to put my top piece in place. So I can do it like this. Or if you don't have a hook like this or you want to make it more stable. Sorry, these bells are going crazy behind me. You can use a push pin like this. Whatever works for you, either one. Alright, so now what we're going to do is we're going to start with our top color. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to find the middle of this by putting my two ends together like so and pulling it up to the middle so here's the middle 
and I want to put the middle right here next to my knot. So lift this up and place this right in the middle. Kind of position everything. Okay, so when we're going to start our macrame knot, we want to think of P's and Q's and pretzels, if that makes sense. So we're going to start with a P, because why not? So here's the shape of a P, and we're going to bring our left side over the top. So here is basically a P. Okay, so we've got the left side is on top, and we're going to bring that tail under all of our bracelet and through this loop. So now we've got a pretzel, so to speak. <laughs> so once we've got our pretzel, we're gonna pull everything tight and up against our knot, so right under our knot. Pull it nice and tight. All right, so we did our P, now we wanna do a Q. This is kind of back and forth, so here's Q basically. Now our right cord is on top, so we're going to take the right cord, put it under, and through our loop. And again, we have a pretzel shape. Pull everything tight. Okay. So we have a little bump on this side. If we have a bump on that side, that's the side we want to start with. So again, we're going to do our P. So if you lose your place, always find that bump, and that's how you know what side you want to do your P or Q on. So our bump is on the right side, so we're doing our P, creating our pretzel. And bringing everything up through and tight. Now the opposite, a Q again. Our right side goes over and then under and through. Pull everything nice and tight. One, two, three, four. So we want to do five bumps. I want to see five bumps, so we're going to add one more bump. So I'm going to do my P now. Left side is over and then under. And pull that tight. Okay. So we should have five bumps. One, two, three, four, five. And that's what I want for this pattern. You can do whatever you want, um, but all of mine are gonna be five bumps before I pull up a bead. So after our five bumps, we pull up our first bead and we continue on with our P's and Q's. So I need to do a Q on this side and bring it through. Pull it up tight so it goes around the bead. Makes like a nice little frame around the bead and holds it in place. So now I need to do my P. My left side goes over and then under and through. And pull it up tight. So it's kind of annoying because my uh, little area my base keeps moving around on me um, so this is what I'm gonna do I, I went and I grabbed a another pin and I'm just gonna stick it down below here to hold my base in one spot so it doesn't slide around on me as you're moving and this will keep everything tight sorry I didn't mention that earlier I totally forgot but this makes it so much easier and tighter so things don't slide around as you're working so anyway we're gonna continue on with our P's and Q's and pretzels and five bumps in between each bead until we get down to our last bead.
Okay, so I've got my five bumps here. Well, one more. I've got four, so let's do one more here. Okay, and pull everything tight, and now we're pulling up our last bead. So I'm going to pick up this pin, give myself a little bit more working room, put this pin back down to anchor everything, and continue on. <clears throat> So I see I have a bump on this side, right here, so I know I need to make a Q, so I need to do it on like this. So remember, if you forget your place and if you need to do a P or a Q, look for that bump and that'll tell you you need to work on that side. So here we go, over, under, and through, and again, bump right here, so Q over, under, and through. Bump. So over, under, and through. And then on this side, over, under, and through. And then pull tight. Let's see how many we have here. So we got one, two, three, four. And we need to do one last one here to get our five. Over, under, and through. Okay, so now we're ready to pull everything quite tight. This is our last piece of the macrame here for the main bracelet part. So we could take everything apart now, or everything off. Make sure everything's straight, and what we want to do now is take some scissors or cutters, and we're going to cut the blue tail, so our top coat tail, off. So I'm going to pull everything kind of tight in a way, and then a snip off till I have just like a little nub showing here. And I'm going to burn down this nub. So I'm going to do this by rubbing the little nub against the flame. So I don't want to put the flame really onto the bracelet. I'm just going to rub kind of against it and then gently press down. Be careful not to burn yourself. Most of the time this is not very hot, but sometimes it can get extremely hot, so just be aware of what you're doing. Again, we're going to cut right here. Leave that little nub like this. And again, turn on the flame and rub the nub against the flame. Very carefully. You'll see a little bubble and then press that down gently. Okay, so now we want to put a little knot right here next to our macrame. Okay, just like this. So we're going to go over and under and through. And then pull everything tight. Use that your nail or your thumb to press that knot in good. So this got caught on something. I'm just going to get rid of this little loop that got pulled out here gently. And then push that in. Okay. So now we're ready to add at the two inch mark again. We want to match to the other side. <coughs> Excuse me. So this time we're going to measure from the knot to the two and put our first knot here. Me measure as close as you can to that two inch mark and then pull tight. And then we're ready to slide on our last remaining bead. So remember we left that last one over here. So this is the 11th bead that we're adding on. Pull that guy down and then put a knot right next to it. Over, under, and through. And then pull, keep that knot tight up against this bead. So I kind of just pull the loop and then hold my nail in place as I pull my tail. Okay, when everything's tight, you can cut off the ends of this. 
Leave some little nubbies here and take your flame and burn those down. And you can use the end of this if you need to or your finger. This is going to be a bigger bubble, so it could burn your finger. So I like to use a lighter or something else to press down the bubble. Okay, so again, cut off the nubs. Use that flame. A little bit more here. Okay, and then use this, kind of roll it around. Then when it starts to cool a little bit, go ahead and squeeze all that together. Okay, so we've essentially got our base here. It's our, bra our bracelet, but now we need to have a closure. So we're going to make a sliding adjuster knot with the same macrame knot that we've been using. So I'm going to grab a piece of cording. I'm, I want it to be blue. You could use black or whatever color you're using. And I'm going to cut 12 inches. So about a foot of cord here. I'm going to put one going up and one going down. So kind of side by side like this. Try to keep it parallel if possible. And I want to lay this down and tack it in place, just to make it a little bit easier for me to do all this. So let's get this adjusted like that. Okay, so you should see everything kind of laying side by side like this. We're going to take our 12 inch piece and put it under until we're about in the middle of it. So kind of like this, okay? We're just going to start with our P's and Q's. So. I'm just going to start with a P here. My left side goes over again, under, and then through the loop to make my pretzel. Okay, and I just want to pull it pretty tight. The thing is, you want this to be tight, but you don't want it so tight that you can't slide your ends. So pull it pretty, pretty you know, nice and tight. <clears throat> don't squeeze the heck out of it, though. And then create your Q. Over, under, and through. Have my pretzel. Pull up. And readjust and press down if things start to move on you. Now I need a P. So over, under, and through. Pull it tight. Give me this Q, over, under, and through. And let's just check our tension so far. So you see how this is sliding? It's a little bit tight, but it's not like I can't move it. So that's okay. And we also don't want it so loose that everything slides around. Because this may loosen up over time anyway, so it's better to be on the tighter side. You just want to be able to move it gently. So I'm seeing where my bump was to remember what side I start with. So my bump is on the P side, so I create a P. Pretzel and pull. And I want to have probably five to seven bumps, if you will. Um, so I think I'm going to do seven on this one. There we go, pull it slow, slow and precise. And I should have seven bumps here. So now we can pull this kind of tight here and then push everything kind of together to make it look nice. And then pull one more time here. And we're ready to cut these tails off. So again, cut it off, leave a little nub. You can see this little guy here and run it against the flame. So put your flame on and gently have your nub touch the flame. This is small enough that I just use my finger for this one. We don't want it to stick to the black part. We don't want it to stick to our base. We want to push it up against the blue so it doesn't get caught on our sliding area. So again, nub 
and then run it, run it against the flame. Okay, and push it down. And that's it. So it should be adjustable now. You could see this is on the smaller side, um, but my wrist measures about six and a half, between six and a half and seven. So as long as it fits over the widest part of my hand, I know it should fit my wrist. I just don't want crazy tails hanging down here. So this is why I make it about this size. Um, but this is how you hold it. I hold it with one finger and then hold the knot as I pull the other side. So again, I'm just holding it down. I should be able to wear it like this, but this will definitely fit my kid's wrist. They're ages seven and 10 and the, this size fits them as well. Um, but it's a great piece. This is the Tar Heel color, so go heels. Carolina born and raised. <laughs> anyway, you could take it on and off just like this. It's pretty easy to use by yourself. You don't need lots of help. Um, and that's it. If you've got any questions, you can leave them in the comments. Again, you can adjust this to the sizing that you need. So cut what you need, add as many beads as you want. And we hope you enjoyed this video. Please don't forget to hit like or subscribe to our channel to learn more beading tips like this. Happy beading from us at Firefly.